Hello and welcome to Apsley House. I'm Josephine Oxley, the keeper of the Wellington Collection and we're in the Wellington Collection at Apsley House in London and we're going to talk um, about this wonderful painting um, by Titian. It's Titian's Darnay. Um, it hangs here in Apsley House in this wonderful Piccadilly room. Um, Apsley House houses a wonderful collection of paintings, over 300 paintings on show here. Paintings that include Titian's, Velasquez's, Rubens, Bruegel's. Uh, we have an outstanding collection of paintings here at Apsley House. Many of these paintings actually came from the Spanish Royal Collection, including Titian's Darnay. Now, it probably has one of the most exciting stories that is attached to any collection anywhere. The reason these paintings are here is because they were captured on the battlefield in northern Spain at the Battle of Vitoria in 1813. And these paintings, over 200 paintings, were in the baggage train of Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. The French had invaded um, Spain. They had been there for um, eight or nine years. Wellington led a force of Anglo-Spanish troops uh, who defeated the French armies and at the very last battle on the Spanish mainland uh, in 1813, Joseph Bonaparte brought this enormous baggage train onto the battlefield and it contained lots of paintings that he had taken from the Spanish Royal Collection. The Spanish Royal Collection being the best collection in Europe had an outstanding um, array of Titians, of Raphael's, all the great Italian masters, but also some wonderful Spanish paintings, which weren't that known outside of Spain. And the paintings were rescued by the Duke of Wellington, because of course Apsley House is the first Duke of Wellington's home. The paintings were rescued by him and brought back to London, and then later they were gifted to him by Ferdinand VII of Spain. So at Apsley House today, we have 83 paintings in the public part of the house that were part of the Spanish Royal Collection, including four paintings by Velázquez and uh, three paintings by Titian and many more. Um, so when you come to see Apsley House, you'll be able to see this outstanding collection. The Spanish collection um, forms the, the core of the collection and then the Duke goes on to collect many other paintings, uh, notably Dutch paintings and a lot of con wonderful contemporary paintings. Um, but that's why Titian's Darnay is here uh, in Apsley House and it's one of the most significant paintings in the Wellington collection. Um, an outstanding example of uh, a later Titian painting. And this painting was started in 1551. It was commissioned by the then Prince Philip, later Philip II of Spain. Um, and he was uh, heir to the most powerful throne, the most powerful monarchy in Europe. His father, Charles V of Spain, was the new, hailed as the new Charlemagne, uh, the Holy Roman Emperor. Their territory stretched all across Europe. Um, so they were great patrons of art. And in fact, Philip's father had also been a patron of Titian uh, and had commissioned many portraits and other works. Now, Philip, as a prince, had a fairly well-developed sense, aesthetic sense. He was a very interested in art. He knew what he wanted to do and what he wanted to commission. When he met um, Titian, which he did twice, uh, once in Milan and once in Augsburg. At uh, both times, Titian painted a portrait of Philip, um, very important portraits, one, the main one which you see today in the Prado. Philip uh, asked him to paint a series of paintings based on mythological stories. So these poses, as they became known, these six paintings, were based on Ovid's Metamorphos, paint, um, epic poem. Although Titian didn't always stick to the story, and he did rather invent some of the scenes. Um, but here we have this wonderful Danai, and she is the first in the series. So she is the first painting that Philip II receives from Titian. And she is a mythological princess. She is the daughter of King Argos, and she is. Um, here shown imprisoned. The reason she's imprisoned 
is that her father is told through a prophecy that her son will murder him. So to stop her giving birth or getting married, he imprisons her. You see it's a rather, looks like a rather attractive prison, but apparently it was a place where she was completely enclosed. Now she is um, seduced by the god Jupiter, the most important of gods. And the way that he enters her bedchamber is through a little, little hole, a little chink. There's a little chink in her armour here. And as you can see at the top of the painting, there is this golden shower which rains down on her. And she is portrayed here in the most sensual way. The thing about the Danai is probably the most erotically charged painting in the series of the posies. All the posies are, show a, a great deal of naked flesh. It was a great way of Titian showing his power of representing the naked female form. But I think that the Danai is the most sensuous um, of those females that are portrayed in the series of paintings. Um, she does indeed uh, bear a child to Jupiter, uh, Perseus. Uh, she is set adrift and she does have a, a life after this Im imprisonment. Um, what is wonderful here as well is that Titian is, um, has set up a great uh, contrast. So on one side of the painting we have this handmaiden, effectively her jailer perhaps, who is also trying to participate in this golden shower. You see that she's holding up her apron to receive some of the, some of the joy of this whole seduction scene. She's an old lady. She's painted in these very earthy colours. The contrast between her and the Princess Danai couldn't be greater. She's old, she's painted in dark colours. Danai is young, she's painted in this luminous way that Titian had with painting flesh, where he painted layer upon layer of thin glazes to create this luminosity. And even when you look at very closely at Darnay's body, you will see little bits of grey as well, little bits of grey pigment, just accentuating um, her flesh. She's shown in a very languid, erotic pose. Now, this wasn't the first time that Titian painted the Danai. Ten years previously, he had painted a version of this uh, for Cardinal uh, Faranesi in Naples, which is still in Naples today. It's slightly different. The legs are positioned differently. She has a little lapdog curled up by her hand. Um, so it's his second adventure into the idea of portraying um, Danai. And when um, this painting went a couple of years ago to the Prado for an exhibition, um, luckily for us, they undertook some wonderful conservation work which really revealed an enormous amount about the painting. The painting was very dark pre-2014. Um, there was some doubt as to its quality because it was quite badly uh, damaged. When it was um, taken into the studio, the conservator there realised there was a lot of overpainting. The, the reds were very dull. Um, the bit that had retained uh, its true look of quality was the body of Darnay herself. Titian has painted her in a, a lead white, which is quite a robust pigment, so she had retained some of her glory. Uh, but even so, the conservation process revealed the true nature and the beauty of her body. It almost uh, looks like there's a sort of light behind her. Um, the way that he lights her up um, is uh, wonderful. And as you get closer and closer to the painting, you see these wonderful touches, uh, dark touches throughout her body, which sort of accentuate the outline. She sits on this uh, wonderful uh, satin sheet, but it's not, 
it's not painted in the, to be in a high sheen. It's painted in a very subtle way, and she's reclining on these pillows. And then the beautiful reds in the curtain are there on that side of the painting. The other side of the painting is a very sharp contrast. There's still some damage here. We, we don't know when the painting um, was damaged. Um, it certainly uh, came to Apsley House in the more or less in the state that it is now, of course, with a lot of overpainting and, and darkening of varnish over 200 years. Um, but when the other exciting thing that happened in the Prado when it was being conserved was that out of its frame, we can see quite clearly that it's been cut down. And this is really important because seen with the other five paintings, it seems to have a very different shape. So often it's been thought not to be part of those posies. But actually, if we look at it and see that it's been cut down, we will know that it had more of a square format like the other posy paintings. So the conservation has informed an enormous amount about what we know about this painting. Now, seeing the posies together, which of course they were always intended to be seen together, we don't know whether Philip had a particular room that he intended to show them in, but they were supposed to be seen together. What will strike the viewer will be the sensuousness of these paintings all together in one room for the first time in hundreds of years. Um, this will be a very exciting uh, reveal because these paintings will talk to each other. Um, if you look at the Prado painting, the, which was the second painting in the series, the Venus and Adonis, that, unlike the Danai, which has this full frontal naked woman, in the Prado painting, her back is towards us. So Titian is able to explore a very different way to show a female form, a lot more sculptural, but it's, there's a front-facing female, a back-facing female, and these paintings will make so much more sense when we see them all together, which, of course, we will when they're all exhibited um, together uh, at uh, the exhibition. And when this painting leaves Apsley House, um, we will be able to replace it with another painting here because we have so many paintings in the collection. Um, but for us, the significance of the exhibition overrides us having this gap because it's a once in a lifetime um, opportunity to see these six paintings together. Um, and I think that when we see them together, we will learn even more about them.